The user interface for this app will be made of three main Swift UI views. A navigation view with a word they're spelling from at the top, then a text field where they can enter in new words they want to try and spell, and below that, most of the screen will be a scrolling list of words they've used previously. For now, every time the user enters a word into the text field, we'll automatically add it to the list of used words below. Later on though, we're gonna add some validation to make sure the word's actually possible given the letters they're spelling from, and hasn't been used before, and is actually a real word, and not just some random letters. Let's start with the basics. We have gotta add an array of words they've used already, a root word for them to spell from, but also a string we can bind to a text field. And so we're gonna go ahead and add three properties to our content view for that data. First, at state, private var, used words, equals an array of strings. Then at state, private var, root word, is an empty string. And then at state, private var, new word, is an empty string. So root words are one they're spelling from, the eight letter word, and new words will bind to a text field as they type, it's stored in there. As to the body in the view, we're gonna start off as simple as possible, a navigation view with root word for its title, then a couple of sections inside a list. So we'll say there is a navigation view. Inside there's our list. Inside there is our first section, which is the text field. And we'll ask them to enter your word. Now we wanna bind this thing to a free form text string. So we'll do text dollar new word. We're not buying the value anymore. We're not trying to have a double formatted as a currency or percentage or whatever. It's now just free text to type in. Then at a second section, we'll show all their used words using a for each loop. So we'll say for each used words, ID of backslash dot self, every word is unique, then word in and text word. Then we'll add a modifier to the view, to the list view, sorry, which is navigation title, showing the root word as its title. So we'll see at the top the word they're spelling from at all times. Now as a reminder, using ID self is us telling SwiftUI every item in our array is unique. That would cause problems if there were lots of duplicates inside the used words array, but soon enough we're gonna be disallowing that. It won't be allowed to have duplicates shortly, so it's not a problem. Now, our text field here has a problem. If I press Command R to build and run our code, you'll see it for yourself. Uh, you can go ahead and type into this what you want to, it works great. Uh, so if I go in here and just choose uh, hello, I literally can't submit anything from there. There's no way of adding that word into the list below. To fix that, we're gonna write a new method called add new word. And this is gonna do four things. First up, we're gonna lowercase our current new word string and remove any white space. We'll then check that it has at least one character remaining, otherwise we'll bail out, we'll exit. Third, we'll insert the word they've entered at position zero in the used words array, and then set new word back to be an empty string so they can type another word. Later on, like I said, we're gonna add some validation in there to make sure the word's actually allowable for our game, but for now, this is actually fairly straightforward. I'll go back to content view, add a new method called add new word. This will make sure first we lowercase the word and trim any white space. This is making sure we don't have duplicate words with case differences, like hello, capital H, hello, lowercase h, same word, so always lowercase it. So we'll say, let answer equals our new word dot lowercase dot trimming characters in dot white spaces and new lines. So like hello space and hello are now the same word. We removed a new white space. After trimming white space and lowercasing, make sure there's at least one character in here. So guard answer dot count is greater than zero, else return. Now here, we're checking for at least some letters, is empty is more efficient. But I've done greater than zero because later on you'll be thinking, ah, maybe I wanna have at least three letters, for example. Uh, and so it's easier doing it this way. More on that later. 
Then we will have here uh, extra validation to come later on. And afterwards, used words dot insert answer at position zero. So the start of the array and then do new word is an empty string to remove all its items. Now we want to call this add new word method when the user presses return on their keyboard as they're typing. And in Swift UI, we can do that by adding an on submit modifier somewhere in our view hierarchy. It could be directly attached to the text field. It could be attached to the list. It doesn't really matter because it can be triggered on any text is submitted anywhere in our view. Now on submit has to be given a function that accepts no parameters and returns no value, which exactly matches add new word by remarkable coincidence. And so we can actually pass that directly to on submit. I'll put this below uh, navigation title, on submit, call add new word. Run the app again, and already you'll see things are starting to come together. So I've got my thing here, I'll type a word in, again, uh, we'll do hello, press enter, there it goes, locates nicely, and then world, enter, boom, in it goes. Now the reason we're using insert the answer at position zero, rather than doing append, 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 but on the end of the array, is for a reason. If we'd used append for the answer, we'd write a new word here, like Swift, and if we had lots of words already and appended it, it would go to the bottom of the array, potentially off the screen. There'd be no user feedback on what just happened. It wouldn't be very pleasant. But by inserting at the start of the array, they all slide in at the top of the list automatically. It works much, much better. Now, before we put a title up here, a meaningful one, I want to make two small changes to our current layout. First up, when we call add new word, it locates the word here, which means we can't add hello, capital H, hello, lowercase h, hello, all caps, whatever. Um, however, it looks odd in practice because we wrote hello in here with a capital H and then they press enter and they see a lowercase h appear here. Uh, and you can see that it's warning me here, by the way, it's saying, whoops, we've got multiple uh, hello in here. This is a bad thing. Don't do that. I did say ID self is dangerous. <laughs> in this particular case, we'll, we'll be blocking that from happening shortly because uh, it will have additional kick in. Anyway, we don't want the capital letter. We want to have no capital letter. It looks strange when it's added. And so we can modify that by going to our text field and adding a new modifier here called auto capitalization. Now, by default, it capitalizes the first letter. So we can just say modifier auto capitalization dot none. Turn off capitalization for this text field. And now when it runs, I can go ahead and type just normally hello again, and it will have, all being well, a lowercase h. Unless, of course, I ask for it, I hold down a caps key or whatever, but by default, it'll be lowercase, which is much, much nicer. The second thing we're gonna change, honestly, just because we can, is to bring in Apple's SF symbols icon set to show the length of each word that they've typed. Now, SF symbols provide uh, graphical numbers of zero through to 50, all using the format n.circle.fill. So one.circle.fill, 20.circle.fill, whatever, blah.circle.fill. Now, in this program, we'll be showing up to eight letters at a time because a source word eight letters, so the maximum they can make is eight letters. So we can actually use SF symbols safely for this because it has zero through 50, one to eight is perfectly fine. And so we can wrap our current text word thing here inside a H stack and then place an SF symbol next to the text to show an example value. We could say image, system name, and what we want to do is use word.count as string interpolation, then dot circle, like that. So we'll get one dot circle, two dot circle, three dot circle, whatever you want to. Um, if you want to have the fill version, you can do, just add dot fill. It's down to you. I'm gonna use, let's try one dot circle first and see how that looks. And so it'll write next to each word we enter how long the word is. So I do again in here, hello, I'll see it's a five, hello. 
It looks really nice. And again, if you want to add in the, the filled variant, go for it. There are various options here, which is really nice. Uh, so I've, again, if I do hello, hello, boom, it flips it around, it fills it in. Anyway, I'll go back to my regular circle one. The main thing is we can now type words into the text field, hit the return key and see them slide in along with their length below. Now, if you wanted to, you could uh, add one sneaky little tweak here. It's really nice. If I have hello uh, in here, it just pops in straight away. We could say animate that using with animation and get a sneaky little thing. Now, we haven't looked at animations much just yet. We'll look at it much more shortly, but that alone should make it slide in much more nicely. Let's find out. So I'll now say uh, here, hello. Beautiful. So it kind of just appears, world, like that. I think it looks much better. Much better. Beautiful. Again, we'll look at animations more later on in this course, but for now, it's a big, big improvement, I think.